Hey, this is Dave with Presence Valley Barbell, and I'm just getting back from my last big squat bench deadlift day before my competition here in two weeks, and everything went awesome. So I uh, started with high bar squats, and it was, it was just a top single. Uh, 495, I actually uh, hit this last week, and it was every bit of a 9 RPE, but that was coming back from vacation and everything, and so then today took that single again and moved maybe the best it ever had. So just followed that with a couple easy sets of five. Uh, I, I like doing this, this high bar squat day for a lot of my volume training early in the week. The, I, I tend to get beat up pretty badly in my upper body. Um, it affects my bench press pretty dramatically from low bar squatting. So a lot of my training early this week and really a lot of last week got, got messed up because of the, the vacation, having to jam some stuff together, but back on track now at this point. So did all the, the high bar squats, followed it with some bench press. Bench press 402, followed by a couple triples with, with 363. And again, this is something that I'm, I'm super pleased with. I think I've only bench pressed over 400 uh, before, before two months ago, maybe four times in my life. So now I've hit it about twice a week, every week for the last maybe month. So uh, bench press is, is looking fantastic. So one of the things that I think has helped me the most in training and, and also be really consistent in competitions has been moving to a self unrack. So I wanted to go over a lot of what I think, uh, you know, I guess the mistakes that people make when they're trying to do this and what, what makes them require a handoff uh, in competitions or, or just in training. So the, the big deal, the big reason I think people should move to doing the self unrack is, is that in the USAPL and the IPF, you aren't allowed to bring your own person, your own spotter to, to do the handoff for you. So this adds, this adds a lot of variables into the competition to where it can be really unpredictable what kind of handoff you're going to get. Obviously, your opener is the, the first time that this person is touching a bar for you or handing the bar off to you. So, so there's, there's some uh, communication that needs to be had. And then at best, you know, you get, you get one that's at least decent. But if you, if you do the, if you take the time to learn how to do your own handoffs, you can take a lot of that control in your own hands. And I think actually make your bench press setup a whole lot better. So in, in my bench press setup and technique video, I talk a lot about how we want to use our legs to drive our traps into the bench and to curl our hips down onto the, the bench and drive away from the bar. And so you'll see me doing all of these things in the, in the video that I'm really pushing against the bar to drive my traps and to prevent my shoulders from sliding up the bench. And then I'm cueing to use my legs to drive my, to drive my chest at the bar. And, and then to unrack the bar, I push myself into the bench away and then the bar should just clear. So some of the big mistakes that people make when they're trying to do a self unrack is setting up too far away from the bench and setting the, the rack height too low. So you'll see in these clips here that the, the bar has pretty minimal clearance. And this is something obviously that I've practiced a, a whole lot to know what the best rack height is for me, especially at the heavier weights but it just takes repetition. But if you start too far away from the, from the rack, you'll never get it right. Now, the, the fear, I guess, is that when you're pressing the bar back that, that you'll, you'll hit the rack. I think this only happens for people who lose their shoulder position when they're pressing. So if you unrack and you have that clearance, and then during your, your reps you start hitting the rack, I think you probably need to address your setup and your tightness more so than your distance away from the from the rack. So uh, all of these things will dramatically increase your your consistency at meets because you have that under your own control. But I really think that that along with the the setup components to it, learning how to effectively push yourself into the bench and using the bar as a component of that will actually make you a stronger bench presser. So uh, that's a that's a big step that I think a lot of people can make. We see guys like Bryce Lewis be very successful bench pressing 500 plus pounds uh, at, at meets or around 500 pounds just at IPF Worlds of, you know, two days ago and and being extremely successful at that. So it's, it's something that I think you can do at all levels um, and, and that will make a big difference with your training. But after bench press, I moved on to deadlifts. And this was a, a huge day for me. So if you, if you follow the channel, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that the, the last couple of meets have not really gone the way that I wanted them to, especially on my deadlift. So I've felt very strong the last couple of times, hit squat PRs in both my last meets. 
Um, then he gets to deadlifts and I've actually bombed out of both my meets because of balance issues. So, so I've really pulled back on my deadlifts and, and really only been doing a rep or two above 700 pounds for the last, I don't know, three months. And, and so today was the first day that I really tried to push it. And, and I, in my head, I was planning on maybe getting around 335, 340 kilos at, at most. Uh, I guess that'd be like 740, 750 pounds. And, and my warm-ups were just flying. So I uh, went through all my, my planned warm-ups. My original planned opener was 315, uh, like 790 or 695. Um, and over the past weeks, that's been looking fantastic. So I've started to, to move that number up. The, again, the planned opener coming in today was about 705 pounds. And, and then I was just crushing everything I touched. So I'll probably open around 716 to be 325 kilos. And, and I, I have no doubt that that'll, that that'll happen. So I uh, was working up through those. I, I hit uh, 335 kilos. That's 7, 750, 7, 740. Um, and, and it moved maybe the best it ever has. So after that one, I jumped to, to 350, which is the most I've ever pulled on kilo plates is 350 and a half kilos when I set that American record back at the Arnold. Uh, so hitting that again today with the kilos and everything after this being my first heavy deadlift day in essentially four months, uh, I, I, I couldn't be more pleased than how it went. So I uh, followed that one with a few back downs, uh, a couple more singles at 330 kilos, so 727 I think is what that one is, and, and everything went exactly how it needed it to. So I'm very confident heading into this, this next meet here in two weeks, and I'll be looking to put up a total that's... Uh, probably above the American record and potentially above the world record if everything goes right. So uh, I, I think that'll be a pretty good day. I, I only have one more heavy squat day. I have one more heavy bench press training day. Uh, there, well, maybe maybe two including this stuff next week. But uh, next week I'll talk a little bit more about how I taper or how I actually still do some sort of linear progressions going into competitions instead of, you know, the, the big um, high fatigue week followed by, you know, this dramatic deload and hope to – the, the taper saves you kind of thing, uh, but I'm, I'm more about following progressions in the meet and setting up something that can really be predictable and make us have uh, consistent good competition. So I'm right where I need to be, and, and uh, I think it'll be uh, a really exciting thing. So thanks a lot for watching. If you want to keep up, I guess, a little bit more with my training, uh, it's at David Wilson on Instagram. I'll be posting more, more videos here again probably consistently, and I'm going to try to include some of these tips like with the, the bench press unrack and those kind of things. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment. Give me a like. See you next time.